Hello and welcome to the IFSC Lead World Cup in Briançon, France. Well, that is our eight athletes joining us. Fedir Samalev, well, he'll be out first from the Ukraine as he is our first athlete to climb. His physical abilities are enormously and yeah, he really deserves to climb in this final here. And I'm curious to see how he's going to do. So we start off our men's final in this first section. Lots of dual textured holds, although the root setters have set it so the athletes are mainly going to be standing on those black screw-ons. You can see he puts his right foot on it. That graphic on the left, that's our wall. The top being the top, the start being the start. The athletes, ideally, they're trying to climb all the way to the top of the wall for the maximum score. If they can't manage that, they get points for every hold they get to. The athlete with the highest number of points wins the competition. That's the basics if you're new to sport climbing as we watch Fedir dynoing out this first little pop and that's always a moment isn't it yeah athletes? that's for sure i mean i was watching the route just a few minutes ago and i thought i'm curious how this section is meant to be climbed i mean i knew that it was going to be a double dyno but i was not ex exactly sure from which holes he would jump there but he looked pretty relaxed on this jump so it seems to be like a little bit it, obviously it's always a bit sketchy to have a double dyno in a final route but it seems to be quite okay. He looked pretty composed. He's now entering this pipe section of the route. And something the route setter was telling me is just how hard this section is to read. And of course, we know these athletes don't really know how to climb this route. They're using their knowledge to work out as they go along and what they saw in the observation period. But it is all new to them at this point. Yeah, yeah. now with the feet first part. Oh yeah, that, that looks really interesting because I believe that in this part there are several options that you have got how you could climb the sequence. That's actually the way I read it too, to do it. But in theory you could maybe even do it differently. But I'm curious to see if some other, if some other athletes are going to have a different approach to this one. But especially the volumes, they make a uh, route very three-dimensional. They do, and the route setters did design this section to be feet first. That's the method they think the athletes should use. So we've got three minutes, 51 seconds on the clock. The athletes have six minutes in order to climb this route. So do keep an eye on that, because sometimes these routes can be a little tricky to compete in the time. You'll see the athletes speeding up. Yeah, and I would expect that now the route actually becomes a little bit more physical. Like, the first part has been more like a kind of introduction, a little bit of an awkward movement. The feet first part a little bit tricky to read, but I think now it becomes a bit more athletic as well. And these, especially these underclings there, they are very power demanding. And they are going to suck the energy out of your biceps and energy is what they're going to need because we're entering this compression section where the athlete is going to have to use so much muscle and physicality in order to get yeah. through it yeah absolutely and these pinches they're a bit tricky as they're dual texture so your the friction is a lot worse than is as if it was just a normal pinch where you've got friction and everywhere yeah, you can see it shining in the lights. That's a slippery bit. The black bit is the bit with some friction on it, but even that's not particularly good. Meanwhile, Federer, well, he slaps out to that little crimp underneath the volume and now tries for a high heel hook of a very small hold. Always risky. Oh, yeah. But he still looks quite composed. I mean, like, he is already quite high up on the wall and he doesn't seem to be too pumped. I think now it's getting tougher and tougher and now you can slowly also see that he does get a little bit tired but still he always finds a little position to rest and also that's one of his great abilities as a climber he has got plenty of endurance and whenever he finds a tiny position where he can relax a little bit he's going to use it and he's Re regaining a lot of strength in that. Yeah, very powerful this part as he wraps himself around that yellow volume. There is and a look at this flexibility. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? A left heel really pressed in, trying to get all the rubber, and he's fumbling this clip at the moment. You can see fingertips just out of reach, and now he gets it. And that's always a moment. Oh, oh. And then we see the fall from Ah, oh, that was so unfortunate. Well, he'll have a score of 35. Well, Alberto Inez Lopez from Spain, he wants a victory. And how good would it be for him, his confidence, if he walks away with a podium tonight? Yeah, absolutely. He really deserves it. I mean, he has shown it already several times that he can be there. And it just hasn't worked quite out. But 
he does have the potential to win such a competition. I mean, I believe that he's a little bit exhausted for the moment. And I think it's kind of normal because he has competed so much already this year. But he looks a little bit more tired at the, than at the beginning of the Lead World Cups. Well, hopefully he is going to re regain some energy before the Olympics, right? Yeah, and let's see what he could do in this final. You can see on the bottom or the left-hand side of the screen. And now the jump. Ah, oh, but that also full looks commitment there. Yeah, full Alberta. commitment, and it looked really relaxed for him as well. Like he didn't seem to struggle at all with this move. So he crawls ever closer to Federer's high point at the moment. Federer Samalev sitting in first place at the moment. And also, the double dinos quite often they are not actually too hard in a in a lead route because they are not meant that you fall there, but they are meant to bring you a little bit out of the flow and to insecure you a bit. And some are getting along with this easier and some are struggling mentally a little bit more. Yeah, well, we did have a little moment there from Alberto, just clipped the quick draw as he slapped out right. Not a huge problem, but again, just might get into his head a little bit as he uses this feet first method. Trying and to as match you can see, his he's doing it a little bit different than Fedir. Yeah, he's he using the hold a little bit in a different way. And that's the other option that I was thinking about that you could do. It's also feet first method, but not turning around the complete way. Yeah, it's complex that movement because he has to match his heel where his hand is and then totally swing his feet around to the other side. And Alberto looking like he's having to fight here a little bit, looking for the knee bar there. Could yeah, make he it work. starts looking a little bit tired. Like and now as the power demanding moves are coming, I think he'll have kind of a hard time. I hope he's, ah uh, yeah. Yeah, Alberto falls fairly early. Luca Podica. Easier, uh, on the, especially on this dual texture holds. Like, if it becomes humid, then you really have a hard time there. Yeah, it's a bit like, and I've said this before, but when a Formula One race or something goes from dry into pouring with rain, it just changes the game. Let's see what happens, though. Luca, what a breakout year for him. Two finals already. Chamonix, he came so, so close. Seventh in Chamonix, seventh in Innsbruck. Will he move his way up the podium? He's certainly got potential. He's an athlete who could win this and someone we're expecting to win in the future. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. I mean, he's still pretty young and he's already so strong and you can see he's having a very good climbing intelligence. Like, you see him sometimes struggle somewhere already rather low down, but he's always able to recompose very well because he finds some good uh, small uh, sequences where he can rest or just recompose himself a little bit. And that's a very, it's a essential quality that you need as a lead climber. Yeah, he's got very good footwork. And as you said, the intelligence, he just seems to read sequences well. And he's going to have to in a minute because this is the first real crux of this route. Feet first, hands first. Let's see what method he uses. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he's going to approach this feet first method. So he reaches up his right thumb on that dual textured hold, but his fingers on the rough bit, you can see a screw on just underneath. And it looks like he's thinking about feet first here. Yeah, he's doing the feet first method and I think he's, ah, he's struggling a little bit. I'm curious. I think it's a little bit uncomfortable there because the hold where he's moving to, it's, it's not really in cut. So you're not going to feel very comfortable there. You really have to move your body inside the position. Wow, that was powerful. What strength there from Luca, cutting loose on two presses, really. But he's had to go back, and I think he's going to stick with his feet forward method, but he has lost some energy doing that. It was so shouldery, that move. I think that, that was super power demanding. I mean, he basically just jumped inside of his shoulder as a Gaston. Ooh. All right, now he spins himself, but he's trying to get his left hand through, and you can see his heel almost blocking his fingers there. Presses around Toya. Oh, yeah, he is having a hard time here, and he's searching. Um, yeah, I think Sasha is searching 
for another win actually after his first victory in Villar two years ago. Exactly, 2019 was the last time he won. He has come so close so many times. Yes, yeah, and like he so deserves it. I know, I've known him already for quite a few years. I've started training with him sometimes back in 2016 and already in that time he was very strong having a solid potential and it was very interesting to see how year by year he got a little bit stronger a little bit more experienced and well now he's basically one of the absolute top climbers and it's so exciting to see him here in finals and I truly wish him best of luck I it would be nice to see him win once again yeah, he is one of the loveliest guys around and the crowd always gets behind him as he gets through this first part of the route. Fairly straightforward, you just have to keep it together. Remind yourself you're one of the best in the world and do the job you're here to do as we get close to this double dyno. Look how dramatic this is. Big old leap out left, a good holds, but still always a moment early on. And very solid once again. Yeah, no problems from Sasha there as he quickly moves through. And that is our current two athletes who have climbed at the moment, sitting in the hot seats. Let's see what Sasha can do here as he rests with a high heel. Sebastian, what do you think? Feet first or hands first for Sasha? I say Sasha is going to go feet first because, wow, that was very, very risky. Yeah, but I think, you know, the sloper with the rising humidity, it becomes worse and worse. And I think it's really hard to actually keep on being stable there. So Sasha bumps his way there, immediately sees the feet, the heel, and he's looking like he's gonna make a clip from this position, which is awkward, also but he quite makes it work. demanding clip, yeah. Right, tiptoeing his toes around, trying to find some friction. You can see the rubber left from other athletes' shoes on the hold, that's the sweet spot, really. And Sasha not having any troubles with the feet first method, but I expected that. He's a very good route reader. Yeah, he did that well, and it was so interesting watching Lucas struggling and Sasha just immediately reading it. Yeah, it's all about route reading. It's all about route reading and also this kind of intuitive feeling because sometimes it's really hard to read a route perfectly from from the bottom, but. If you are on the position, you kind of have this feeling, okay, this is the way it must be working. And for me, this is a very important skill. I personally wouldn't consider myself, for example, as the amazing root reader, but I know that when I'm in a position, I quite often just intuitively feel what I've got to do. And yeah, as a lead climber, as a competition lead climber, this is an essential skill. Well, Sasha is just under three minutes left on the clock, so halfway through, and he's certainly more than halfway up this route. And on the section that I would imagine really suits him, this physical compression he moves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at his body shape. He is, he's a very muscular guy. He's pretty strong, so he likes that. Well, he's currently in third, looking at that graphic over on the left-hand side. A few more moves and he'll move into second place. Cuts loose, then gets a toe. We remember Fede got a heel there. And now he gets the heel and Sasha will move up the leaderboard for sure. Now there he is, second place for Sasha. Slowly starting to get a little bit tired, but I, I know Sasha, yeah, and this is definitely a way better uh, way to clip actually, this one, because the heel hook from Fedor was a little bit too high. Wow. Let's look at our leaderboard then. Sasha Lehman, we just watched him climb. He climbed his way up into the lead, although he's got the same score as Fedor. And we're about to see Martin Stranick climb on this finals route. It is a, it is a tricky, tricky problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, he's 31. He got a bronze medal last week, and he will love to add another one to that collection. So let's see what he can do. There are certainly sections of this route that will suit him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if he's go getting well through the feet first part, then this powerful part, I see him liking that a lot. So Martin Stranick getting us underway here in the men's final, about halfway through this men's final at the moment. And he's climbing very quickly. Yeah, it is his style, isn't it? He? he just goes for it. Let's see what he does in the double dyno. Easy peasy. Yeah, absolutely smooth. 
you can see just a different speed here as he presses into that hold, releases the heel that could be a bit tricky, just drags it across. And I think, I think especially in these moves, if you are able to get through them quickly, that's so power saving. All right, so far he's facing to the left and now he turns his attention to this rightwards traverse. That's the hold, the all important press. And you can see similar method, heel on, and then he'll look to get that left toe out on the volume. Ah, totally solid. <laughs> and still even campusing that part. So you can tell he has still got plenty of power left. Yeah, I'm shaking my head in the commentary box just watching that power on that campus move. It's such a little thing, but it just it shows how strong he is at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Right, heel hooks locked in, no problem through this feet first movement. And you can see he's going there with the other hand. I'm curious how he's going to salute that, if that's actually working. Yeah, he's going back because that was kind of the wrong sequence. You need to be there with the right hand where he is right now and then get into the undercling with the left hand. Otherwise, you're not getting out of the position, I think. Yeah, so a slight root reading error there, but he sorted it out quickly and now he's into this powerful compression section, barely stopping, not resting. Yeah, but if you look at him, he really likes this kind of movements, and he, f he looks so composed. Although a slight drop there of the rope, perhaps revealing that Martin is getting tired here. Let's see, now he comes into this very awkward series of moves through the yellow volume. Now resting, intelligent with a high right heel. Double heels for a second, now a heel and a toe. So now the very interesting part is starting. I would say he may be a little bit fresher than the other athletes so far. But let's see what happens because it has been all happening so quickly here. Yeah, this is the stopper move. This clip is fine if you know how to do it. But he looks relaxed. Look at his face. His facial expressions, they don't show any negative emotion. Well, Martin Stranik. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> yes, Martin Stranik. He looks at the audience, gives a little boss nod and up with the right hand. But now he's got to awkwardly stand himself up and just Ooh. loses the stand-up press move. Dimitri Fakirianov, I mean, a bit of a legend. Impressive, after three years. Yeah, he's a bit of a wild card into this finals as well. Yeah. Like, I don't know how he's going to perform, and it's going to be fascinating to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think nobody knows that. It's, it's tricky to say. Like, for him, when he climbs, anything can happen. He tends to do mistakes, especially in on-site climbing, but if he doesn't, uh, then he's almost unbeatable. <laughs> I mean, he has unsighted fisheye, which is a very famous 8C in Oleana. He's got it somewhere in him, and it's whether he can turn it on for this finals. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would. I really hope that he's finally going to have a good run again, because there have been several years where it didn't go so well for him. I know during the last years he struggled a lot with injuries of his knee, of his fingers, like both of his knees actually. So he's had a hard time and well now I know how it is to be struggling with injuries and ah, it's, it's nice to see him back in finals. Let's see how he deals with this first little move really in the men's final. He's hesitating a little bit, it is a long way but he makes it look easy eventually. Yeah. It's just commitment that move isn't it's it? It's commitment, that's all and if you're not getting too stressed out, you're not going to fall there as a finalist but yeah, it's, I mean, it's awkward always. Right, let's watch this move because it is a bit of a moment. This Every time one of the athletes pop out to this next hold, I kind of get a little heart lurch. Let's see how he does it. Heart lurch, is that a thing? I don't know, maybe I should see a doctor about that, but <laughs> whatever, I get a little bit nervous for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can see he doesn't like that hold at all, but uh, solidly done. Yeah, presses out to it. He, he is thinking about these crux moves a little bit more than the other athletes at the moment, which is no bad thing, it's just a different thing. It's a different thing, but sometimes it can be the crucial thing that is taking a little bit more energy, and then at the very important part, you are just not having that energy left. Right, he goes feet first. We know this is the way, deciding with the toe instead of a heel. And I mean, this is always the tricky part in competition climbing. If you want to get really high, 
you need to take risk and you need to take sometimes a little bit more risk than you would like to. If you're very, very strong, you're able to compensate a lot. But at the end, if you're just trying to compensate all the time, then you'll never use your whole potential. He might have left himself a fairly awkward clip here. You can see just having to pinch that, but he has made it work. But it doesn't seem that it's stressing him a lot. <laughs> no, he's always calmed down, hasn't he? It's like he's kind of climbed himself into a good feeling on this route. Yeah, but that's how I know him. That's how I remember him also from training, like on holds where other people are falling, where other people are struggling. He's just taking some chalk. I don't know, having a drink. <laughs> well, if he if he had a drink with himself, he could. <laughs> yeah, he's he's. Grip strength and endurance is impressive. It really is. He's read that left hand on that hold. Uh, so he's looking totally relaxed still. I hope, I hope this is going to work because he's now again hanging actually. Well, ah. now he's adjusting because he, he's a left hand on that underclick, ideally. And there he goes. He's kind of worked the sequence out, but he has left himself a little pumped at the moment I think he's trying to rest on that undercling of course underclings yeah they can be a good rest they can also be quite sapping for the biceps yeah I personally I do not enjoy at all underclings as resting positions because you're never hanging in a relaxed position like you're always having hanging actively and you always use a lot of core and biceps I would rather go for a smaller hold but a little bit more passive body position well, Dimitri looked a bit shaky for a while, but he's still going. 1 minute 42 on the clock as he nears the lip of this wall. And this is and the sequence. Awkward. The clip he was just doing, the under cross clip, the, real, the heel hook really has to stick. Dimitri fighting all the way here. I thought he was going to go earlier on, but he's still here on this finals wall. And now he needs to make this slap up for the crimp. He, he's struggling with the movements a little bit, but as I know him, he's not too pumped, actually. Yeah, he's going from strength to strength here in this final. I mean, but this is where it can quickly go wrong. It's very awkward. The feet are small. Nice. Just signaling to the crowd, and you can hear them respond. That's so good to see as he rests in this press position. And now he's going to stand up to this big right hand. Watch his feet though. At uh, any second move. it can pop. Look at this. This move is, I mean, almost too far for him. Like with his body size. Wow. And he sticks that little side pull with the left hand in order to get himself Amazing. established. That's going to jump him up. Wow. Oh, just loses I think the slap. he just came a little bit low on the hold. Right, Sean Bailey. Well, gold medals. <laughs> and that makes a huge difference. That's such a boost of confidence. Absolutely. And he won Vilas. He won Chamonix. Will he make it the triple here in Briançon? I know he'd love to. You wouldn't know it from his demeanor. He's so chilled and relaxed, but he's got some fire within him as he begins this route. Two clips in. The athletes have to clip all those quick draws on the way up the wall. You can't just free solo your way up. Which can be sometimes very tricky, especially the clips. They can be so demanding and so awkward sometimes. I mean, as a, a sport climber myself, I know how scary the clips can be. And it's no different for these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Right, Sean Bailey. Someone with a huge amount of gas in his tank. He doesn't really stop. He's just relentlessly moves upwards. And such a lovely flowy style from Sean Bailey. Making a double clip down low. Yes, he's having a very own climbing style. Like sometimes you look at him and you think, oh, that sequence looked a bit strange. And then all of a sudden again, there's the switch and he looks totally relaxed again. And he's able to grab holds with only as much power as it's needed, but just not more. And that's a very important ability. And he seems very relaxed of his mindset. He does, using toes instead of heels on that pressy volume and then releases it. That was a very smart idea, using their toe hook and stepping with the right foot to the right side. 
Well, you get a bit more reach as well, don't yeah, you, into that press. Yeah, he got more press. reach and it was way more controlled. So, Sean Bailey, exciting to watch him on this feet first section. Will he struggle? Will he read it first time? Let's find out as he bumps out that right hand. Cuts loose and then, yeah, feet first. All the athletes reading that, certainly from the ground. Oh, but interesting with the right heel press. Yeah, there. I'm curious if he's going, ah, oh, yeah, it works well. I thought there was maybe not enough space, but didn't seem to bother him too much. And now he spins himself round to press where his hands were a couple of seconds ago. He's going to make this clip it's a little bit awkward, but he's now got himself in a far better position in order to do that. Sean resting in an unusual place there. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the place where he's deciding to rest, well, it's, it's interesting to see. I wouldn't expect this one to be a resting position, but it seems to work well for him. And It's very Sean Bailey. What else can you say? It's very Sean Bailey, absolutely. But also the thing about resting positions, everybody is having very individual strengths and weaknesses. And sometimes a position can suit you well where everybody else says, oh, that's nothing at all. That's the interesting part about climbing. Absolutely, and Sean Bailey now moves from his unusual rest as he enters the powerful section of this route. Looking good so far, 2 minutes 45 on the clock. We haven't seen any tops so far. Dimitri getting fairly close just now. It would be cool to see how this route finishes here in Briançon. Yeah, absolutely. Ah, and he is going again with the left hand there first. I mean, we know the match is possible, right? It just yeah. might be a slightly less... Well, I mean, he makes that look fairly straightforward, that match on the other yeah, hand. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. Like It's hard to see whether there's any friction where his hands are, if it's just pure dual-textured slippiness. And now he's approaching to the powerful pinch section. Wow, this heel hook was... Yeah, it was also kind of risky, but it seemed quite stable for him. Yeah, there's not a lot on that white volume, is there? I mean, I think there's a little a black hole underneath, but we'll see when he moves that left foot. No, there's nothing no, there's there. there's nothing so. at all. It's just flat. <laughs> yeah, and Sean... And he's also deciding for this undercross clip. It looks so... For me, it looks awkward because you're only relying on the right heel hook and it could easily, potentially easily slip. But it seems to work well. Sean Bailey is having to fight here. He'll go up. Oh, he thought about going up to the crimp but could only match. Now he goes up to the crimp. And, and I think now he's really fighting, fighting the pump. He is Sean Bailey in a battle for the podium. But and he's still on the wall. He's still on the wall. Can he make this fiddly clip work though? Yes, he can. So let's see. It's quite a reachy move coming up. Has he got the height for it? Is he going to have to work out a different sequence? Whoa. Oh. So Stefano Gisolfi, I mean, I feel like I said the word legend a lot, but he is another one, is Stefano Gisolfi. Yeah, definitely he is. And I mean, also, as you already mentioned it before, not only in competitions, but also on The Rock. Stefano Gisolfi can do it all. He was second in Chamonix, second in Innsbruck. Only made the semi-finals in Vila. A little hiccup for him there, but he's got back on track with those podium places. Let's see what he can do here. Yeah, I mean, Stefano is a guy... He always has the potential to win, and physically, personally, I would say in this final, physically, he might you might consider him as the strongest climber. I mean, it's always hard to tell. You cannot easily look inside of the people, but the way I see it, physically, he's the strongest, And but anything can happen, you know. It, it doesn't matter that much in a final route if you're physically the strongest or not. There are so many factors that are coming together. It was interesting watching that jump for Stefano. He was looking down at his feet as he was jumping almost. He knew he was going to get it. Yeah. Ooh, I think, yeah. And a high heel. Sean Bailey's toe beater we think works best on that. But And you can tell he does not like the sloper at all. And the friction on this one is getting worse and worse with the time. 
and yeah, the rain. <laughs> we actually have one of these holds with us here today, and we can feel how bad the texture is. It's yeah, it's, the texture is awful. Yeah, <laughs> not great. But Stefano makes it through that slopey section, and now let's see if his years of reading intelligence will pay off for this section. Bumps up for the sloper, guppies his hand around it, and now he goes feet first. And I'm curious to see how he's liking actually the feet first method. But that looks very solid. Yeah, Stefano is upside down right now on the wall. It's hard to tell from that camera angle, but he's literally upside down, head towards the ground, and looking amazingly relaxed for a man in that position. He looks totally relaxed, and it's really nice to see because Stefano is someone who sometimes struggles with these tricky sequences. Like, if when it comes down to physical resources, he's hardly beatable. You could see that in the finals in Innsbruck. But sometimes the tricky sections, they are giving him a little bit of a hard time. But this one, he seems really relaxed in this. Stefano Gasolfi, the final male athlete out tonight in this men's final. He's the only one who can knock Dimitri off the top spot. Let's see what he can do here. He's read that sequence well, slightly struggling now, just reversing a little bit in order to rest. And now he's going into that pinch, which is one of, <laughs> one of his holds that he loves, those nasty little pinches. Well, I think whenever holds are bad, he's good on it. <laughs> Exactly, the king of the awful holds is Stefano Gasolfi, and let's see what he, he's got a left hand up, which we've seen a few methods on this, but the rain is still absolutely driving down here in Briançon. Now, high heel hook in order to slap into this compression move, and another bump up with the left hand. And he'll, he's looking solid. Yeah, no trouble so far. Two minutes 28 on the clock, he's got lots of time and he just uses his foot there to flick the rope into a better position. <laughs> Stefano Gasolfi on the big yellow volume. Oh, and oh, he's a wow. huge step. How is he still on the wall? Wow. Ooh. That, that he still caught this one. I mean, wow, I saw him falling, definitely. Stefano Gasolfi is Spider-Man, you've heard it here first. How did he hold on to that yellow volume just using... I, and look at this, I mean, it was super demanding for sure to hold just with one arm, basically. But, I mean, he's still there and he's actually resting. Yeah, Stefano had a moment where he's recovered well, but has it sapped his strength? One minute, 36 on the clock. Stefano resting, somehow still on the wall. He's in fourth position currently. Sean Bailey is in third. He's in the danger zone. Stefano Gasolfi is eyeing him up. And now let's see if he can make the press. He looks far more solid than Sean did on this and a big Absolutely reach up though. Solid. Wow, what is... Ah. Stefano crawling his fingers up. Latching the hold, getting a toe just on that right, flagging the left out wow. and catching and the side he's pull. still there. Now it gets really interesting. Is he going to do this move? He will stick it. And he does it. There you go. You called it statically almost bumped into that hold. And that is jumping him right up to the top of the leaderboard for Stefano Gasolfi. He'll want to finish this route anyway. Why not? 38 seconds on the clock. Let's see a men's top here. Oh, finally drops the big ball with the right hand. Stefano Gisolfi, he leads the way for the men, followed by Dmitry Fakirianov and Martin Stranik. They are our medal position places.